South American music in general and Andean music in particular um, on the whistle, I guess to demonstrate that it can be done, um, but also to demonstrate that you can play other musics on the whistle other than Celtic. Uh, you can play just about anything on a whistle. At the end of the day, um, it's uh, an ethnic flute, just like the cana, which is the usual um, ethnic flute used in the Andes. Uh, you also have in the Andes the pinquillo which is basically a whistle, that's a fiddle flute. The cana is uh, what's called an end-blown flute. I'll just uh, show you what, here are some canas here. Um, and this um, is what the business end of it looks like. There's a notch here that you um, blow across as you would um, a side-blown flute where you blow across the hole in the flute. Here you make the hole by closing the notch off with your lip and then you blow across that and that's the hole. Um, just like uh, the hole in a fiddle flute um, is not made by your mouth, it's made um, by the actual construction of the flute itself. It's basically the same thing. It's a column of air being split. Um, so uh, a few things about um, playing the whistle in a different style. Um, in order to play any style of music, what comes with that music is um, its own type of tone production, its own, specifically with folk music, its own ornamentation, and obviously its own rhythms. Um, the rhythms, are, I wouldn't say they're secondary, but they come uh, a little bit after the ornamentation and the tone production. Um, I'd like to play, if I could, uh, a little snippet from the first track on the album. This is um, a song called... Yeah, so that's a song called El Pacaro Madrugador, which means the early bird, and it was written by Angel Para, who um, is the son of Violeta Para, the um, famous Chilean poet and songwriter. Um, so originally that was played on the cana, uh, a bit like this. amongst you will have immediately noticed that it's in a different key and that's because the fingering of the tune works best um, the way it is so that's the scale it's basically on the cana um, it is um, a scale of A minor um, on the whistle exactly the same scale is a scale of E minor with the same fingering so when I came to record the um, whistle version, I just used exactly the same fingering. Uh, but it takes it all um, up by, uh, what, a fifth. Um, and it doesn't take it into a, a kind of different key realm because one of the things about this music is that um, it's good to stick to um, really neutral keys like G, C, D because the instruments that accompany um, the tunes, i.e. the guitar, the charango, the mandolin, etc. sound best in these keys when they've got as many open strings as possible. So uh, on that little snippet, you heard the intro being played on the charango, which is a Bolivian 10-stringed 
guitar family instrument uh, made from an armadillo shell. And the, the great thing about the charango is, is its openness and the, the, the less strings that you have to hold down, the better it sounds. So therefore, um, open keys. Um, so in the original version of El Pacaro Marugador, um, it was in um, A minor, which is good for the charango. And on the whistle version, it's in E minor, which is also good for the charango. So uh, if you started getting any more elaborate than that, uh, you'd quickly be in trouble. Uh, Charango wise, obviously on the whistle, you just pick up a different whistle. I've got them in every conceivable key. Um, this is the regular one in D. So, what are some of the other ways in which um, playing this tune on the whistle would, would differ from playing it on the cana? Or, to put it another way, how can I play on the whistle to make it sound more like a cana? Well, the, the first and most obvious one is um, the vibrato. Um, on the cana, you use a uh, throat vibrato, which is to say that you um, you kind of wobble your throat very rapidly. Uh, whereas on the whistle, um, you would use finger vibrato. quite rapid but it's a different type of sound and also um, you can the, the, the finger vibrato changes depending on what note uh, you're playing on, on some notes you can't do it at all hardly uh, on others you can do quite a lot of it and on others it doesn't work so well so it's a kind of a it's a movable feast uh, finger vibrato whereas uh, throat vibrato is um, exactly the same whatever note you play so, it's just, you just do exactly the same thing. Um, so I find that um, when, I'm, when I'm playing the whistle, um, it's actually hard to avoid doing finger vibrato. It's so kind of natural. It's like when you play the cane, it's really natural to vibrate your throat. So in order to not do it, I've got to really consciously not do it. And I find that um, when I play these tunes on the whistle, it's a kind of combination of both types of vibrato. Um, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of doing the throat one uh, pretty much all the time there. So, uh, but that's not always the case. I'll, I'll come on to some other tunes in a minute where it's almost impossible to avoid doing uh, finger vibrato. The other most obvious thing is the um, ornamentation. And uh, Andean ornamentation um, is, it's not completely different, but it's noticeably different in that generally speaking, it's much slower. So. And also you'd, you'd have ornaments, so, so let me play the first couple of phrases and you'll see what uh, ornaments are in there. That's one, for a start. The tune is... But... Uh, and then you've got two other ornaments there, which are both quite slow and deliberate. So you've got two types of ornament there. You've got the where you start the note and then do the ornament just after it, um, quite slowly really, like that. And then the other ornament is the slide up. And there's a bit of finger vibrato thrown in for you. Um, I don't know what else to say um, about this particular tune. Um, there are other uh, techniques that I can demonstrate on different tunes, so I think I'll um, wrap up um, this tune for now and move on to another one.